Um, so one of the most interesting things uh, about the punk period is working out what was pre-punk. And of course it wasn't called pre-punk because punk didn't exist. Um, and I lived through that time and I remember how you groped or sought anything that seemed exciting and fast and teenage because rock music wasn't not in a great state after the decline of glam rock in the UK in around 74 and mainstream pop music um, was absolutely terrible. Um, it wasn't the prog rock groups, they'd also almost finished by 74. It was the state of mainstream pop that was so terrible. Um, and so you looked for things that were fast and energetic and seemed to point forward towards what could be a proper rock music for the 1970s. The 60s were long gone. And if you were young as I was then, you wanted something that was 1970s, not the 60s anymore. So here you have on this panel, you have some great stuff. This Dr. Feelgood album, which was uh, released at the beginning of 75, was fantastically important. It was recorded in mono, short, sharp shot songs, uh, extremely aggressive live performances. I saw them several times at that period. Um, and they, in many ways, were direct precursors of punk, and they harked back to the directness of 60s R&B in the UK, like the Rolling Stones or the Yardbirds, all those kind of groups. Um, so they were fantastically important, Dr. Field, and they wrote songs about the city. They didn't write songs about the country or oatmeal or whatever. Um, it was all hard city stuff. And um, in their wake came groups like the 101ers, Joe Strummer's first group, again, much more urban. The 101ers came out of the squatting scene, um, which was very prevalent in London at that time. Um, squatting meant that you could get into an empty house and live there for absolutely no money, which is a great thing for young people. There are a lot of empty houses in London at that point because there'd been a lot of um, demolition or emptying of properties in pre preparation for reconstruction, which didn't happen because the money ran out. So there were a lot of empty houses. Young people would get in um, and they would change the locks and they could live there for absolutely nothing. It wasn't particularly comfortable, but it meant that young people could live near the centre of a town, i.e. London, and that was one of the factors that really fueled London punk, the fact that young people could live near the centre of the city. Um, and the 101ers were very important because they came out of that squatting scene. They were called all the 101ers because the house they squatted was at 101 Walterton Road um, in West Kensington. So, and they were, that was a kind of community activism of, if you like, hard hippies um, that was um, an unacknowledged influence on British punk. What you also have here is, an, is another great pre-punk document. Uh, there are others in the show. Um, but this middle record here is by the Flaming Groovies and it's called Teenage Head. And the Fle Flaming Groovies is also very important in the pre-punk period. They moved, they were a San Franciscan group. They wanted to rock when nobody else did. Their records didn't sell. They moved to the UK in the early 70s. People saw them and loved them. So they're a very important transitional group um, and uh, are not as well known as, say, the ones that everybody talks about, the MC5 and the New York Dolls and the Velvet Underground. But that record is great. And it's all about teenage problems, which, of course, is very important to the kind of rock music we are describing. Um, there you have the 101ers album that was released later. They, they only released a single during their lifetime. Down here, you've got Suicide, who were another group that formed in the early 70s, um, were even further out than either New York or London punk because they used purely synthesized instruments. Um, and really, they were precursors of the future beyond punk, um, which is now called post-punk, but again wasn't called post-punk at the time. And the last one here is Eddie and the Hot Rods, who were very much a younger pub rock group who came up in London after Dr. Feelgood, and they were fast and energetic, and as you can see, they were also teenage.